it's probably the best RV site we've ever had. Kind of a nightmare, but I would do it again in a heartbeat. But can you have too much fire? I don't think so. of groups of people together and go do some good in the world, we're all for it. So I drove up, I was like, I'm jumping off that rock. Okay, enough morbidity. Oh my gosh. All right, so we are at Piney River Resort in Tennessee. This place, I can't even explain to you how perfect it's been after camping in Albuquerque for two weeks in a dirt parking lot and then a half a cross-country trip. This place was just the thing we needed. I think it's probably, it's probably the best RV site we've ever had. We've had a lot of really good RV boondocking spots, but as far as like just a really cool site, which I'm gonna show you here in a second. With like full hookups? I think, I think <laughs> this is probably it. At least top three. I, I don't want to. I don't want to commit to. I don't want to commit to best, but like at least top three. Look at this. Look you guys. at this. Zarbi. Same. We've had fires. We cooked hot dogs last night and our own patio. and meat sticks and it's it's just unbelievable. Your own private beach, and I didn't even know like well this like doesn't really show it off, but aqua it's like water. a green aqua water. We got the fall colors. I'm gonna tell you what the worst part about this site is. <laughs> For Corey. This rock. So I drove up, I was like, I'm jumping off that rock. It's like rule number one, you can't jump off that rock. It's not their property. So you can't you can't can't trespass. It used here. to be a thing, it's not a thing anymore, unfortunately, but that's perfect because that's super deep right there. The girls have gone swimming. This place is just been a good relaxing respite to kind of reconnect as a family and just slow down for a minute. We talked about it a few episodes ago um, earlier this fall that we have certain places that are like our anchor points and those are places that allow us to like sit and reconnect with community and with people that we love but it's also really important to keep a pulse on like your family as its own entity and sometimes yeah. you just need to go and be by yourselves and be in a restful place where you're not like trying to go exploring mm -hmm. all the time and trying to fit in all kinds of stuff so if you guys are starting to feel like it's a little chaotic in your full-time life and you're realizing that you guys are you know getting a little snippy with each other maybe like there's there's a couple it's because you probably need family time you don't need more people you just need yeah. your family and i get it that's that's going to be a hard thing to recognize because you're going to hit the road and immediately you're going to want to try to connect to people so your 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 radar isn't going to be like no we should focus on us but i'm telling you find your people but also don't neglect hanging out with your family hanging out with your spouse your significant other don't disregard that yeah. people are great but I mean, this is your bubble. You gotta protect your bubble. You gotta, you gotta be with your bubble. That's gotta be good before you can accept more. So. Yeah, and before you can actually feel excitement about going off and taking your next adventure. So if you're like starting to not feel excited about what you're going to next, that may be another warning sign that- You need a break. Maybe you need a break. You just need to take some time, be a family together and be in a place where you don't have to go anywhere and you can just enjoy being together and being in nature. And that's another really key point. So find a location where you can walk out your door and just sit in like silence. Or you're a couple or you're you're just a single person and you got your beach chair right down there and your pet and just enjoying this view, any view that you can. Take the time to slow down. I, it's hard for me, I gotta convince myself. That's why I'm saying it, because I gotta yeah. convince myself to slow down because it's super important. And when he says convince himself, I have to convince him to slow down. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna cook some dinner tonight. We're gonna do just 
steak and potatoes. There's just nothing wrong. We're gonna have some salad too, but steak and potatoes. I, my favorite new thing has been top sirloin. So you can get it at Sam's Club is my favorite place. You can get it at Walmart. You can get it at Costco. You can get it anywhere. But top sirloin is like kind of like a hidden gem as far as steaks go. Super good steak flavor. It's tender. It's just a really good cut of meat. So give that a try. Um, and then we're gonna do this new thing we've been doing with potatoes. It's like a hybrid mashed potatoes slash like Fry them on the Blackstone. They're so good. They're really good. They're so good. So that's what we're after. So what we do for the steak, we're doing it on Blackstone. We always do it on the Blackstone. Everybody thinks I do it on the smoker. I cook ribs and I cook uh, pulled pork mm -hmm. and brisket and stuff on the smoker. I cook chicken on the smoker. Yes. But most steaks and hamburgers I do on the Blackstone. We're curious. There's, How do you guys do it? Let us know. There's room for both in my opinion. I don't think one fits all, but I mean, if you were to only, if you weren't into smoking already, if you only needed one, I honestly would say Blackstone. It's hard for me to say, but <laughs> I think I would say Blackstone if you're not interested in long cooking processes. Yeah. So what we do with the potatoes, I'm, I'm back to the potatoes, is uh, we cook them like 75% through in either the Instapot or just boiling water, 75% done, and then smash them on the griddle and Oh, they're just so delicious. Salt, pepper, maybe a little garlic, parsley, I don't know. Whatever you like, but it is so good. So that's what we're doing tonight. Although I think this is probably the best site because look at this view, this pergola. Let me, oh, geez, what are we doing here? I'm gonna turn on the... Oh, we gotta turn the lights on. Twinkle lights here <laughs> come included. I will say, <laughs> this is not an easy site to get into. So if you're as long as me, you can do it, sort of. That's me, 35 and a half foot travel trailer, 42 foot fifth wheel. That's about what you're dealing with. But if you're smaller than that, you're gonna do a whole lot better. We basically, I think, only got in here with any kind of grace because there's nobody in either of the other sites just because of how this, this place was designed. This used to be a farmer's, that he kept his own RV, so he wasn't concerned with other people. So that's how this place even came to be. But unbelievable sight, look at this sight. I know, I keep, I've already showed it to you, but yeah, like, but I mean, it's been so calming. It's been like everything that we could have possibly needed. And they're expanding, they have glamping tents, they have cabins, they're building tree houses. I mean, they're putting a pool in next year. I think this is like, we're about an hour west of Nashville here. And I just want to talk about this fire because I think we've really built ourselves a, a masterpiece. So it's kind of like a hybrid. Everything's about hybrid this tonight, looks actually. looks like we seem so fancy. We've never pre-made a fire pit. I did, last night, just like that. You did? Oh yeah. I wasn't there, so. They weren't there. Yeah, but this So we got a teepee in there with the kindling, and then we built a log cabin around it to just. To burn. You know, I'm taking after the Vikings. Like, this is really gonna go up. I mean, if I died tonight, you guys could we'll take care of me. down the river. Right here. Have like a bow and arrow with fire on it. <laughs> Okay, enough morbidity. Morbidity? Morbid talk? Time to cook. I'm excited. This is gonna be good. Okay, so as far as these steaks go, if they are like one inch or three quarter inch steaks, I pretty much do it by time, you know, four and a half, five minutes a size. I like medium rare, but these are all irregular sizes. So I'm actually gonna use a meat probe and just get an actual instant read on what the internal temperature is before I pull them. So these ones right here, you can see they're all broken up. I didn't see in the packaging, but they were, they were cut in half, so it's tough to judge when they're actually gonna be done. So I'm gonna go by temperature. I like medium rare, so I'm gonna go a medium, medium rare. You know, I just like a little bit of paint. So I'm gonna go with about 130 internal, and then I'm gonna pull them, let them rest for 10 minutes. That temperature is gonna come up, and it's just gonna evenly distribute that pinkness. Like, it'll actually stretch, it's weird. I don't know, I don't understand it. So I'm not gonna try to describe it because I really don't know, but let your meat rest. It becomes so much more tender, but let's see. So I said I wanted it at less than 130, pull it off. I don't know if you can read that, but it says 120, oh, 
I'm not even looking at me. Jess is over here like, let me film you. This is 123 is the actual temperature of this meat right here. These thermometers, these instantly thermometers are so good. So I will get that to about between 127, 130, put it on the rack, tent it with tin foil, and then we'll let it rest for 10 minutes. It's gonna be so tender. Get one of these instant read thermometers. They're only like, I don't know, 20 bucks. Just enough time to cook the potatoes. Oh my gosh. So this is just three quarter boiled potatoes. I'm gonna put some oil in it, salt, pepper, a little bit of garlic. We're gonna put it on here, mash it down, and just get that like crispy edge and that it's done. It really is too good. Meat and <laughs> potatoes, like there's a reason why that's the same. All right, we got our last big steak on here. Less than, oh yeah, okay, we still got some time. Okay, 10 more degrees. So in the middle of this, we got dueling fires going on. We got a solo stove going. The babiest of baby solo stoves that we love for places that you just can't have big fires. Um, this thing just runs on pellets. I love this thing. Look at all the extra light that it creates. Overkill, probably. But can you have too much fire? Can you have too many fire pits going at one time? I don't think so. Okay, all that extra heat from behind us with all those fires has got to have finished this. Okay, let me turn the light on. That's what I want. Maybe a little over, but it's gonna be so good because it's just an average. So these things have been on for about five minutes. Those ones are gonna have to stay a little bit longer, but 10 more minutes under this. Put it on a cutting board, put it on whatever you want, tent it lightly and um, move on to the next stage. Got the grill sort of cleaned up. Gonna add a little olive oil. Spread it around. I did not level this thing, I should have, but whatever. Three quarters cooked potatoes. More olive oil. Kinder's the blend. This thing is, this is just the best spice all around. Salt, pepper, garlic. Mix it up. I'm gonna smash these down and then let them sit. Flip them all. There's a million ways to do this. Just don't be afraid to try different stuff. I'm definitely sure that this doesn't look good, but I can assure you that it's gonna be good. And there's probably better methods of crushing crushing these. The measuring cup just gives you something to hold on to. I don't know what this has been, like three, four minutes. I know it looks really gross right now, but it shouldn't in one second. And it doesn't. <laughs> That's what you're after. That super crispy edge. This is not something you can eat every day but it is definitely something that is nice every once in a while. I don't even know what this, what is this? It's like hybrid oh. mashed potatoes, like I guess. crispy mashed potatoes, crispy we, mashed potatoes. There you go. That's what it is. We call them smashed potatoes. <laughs> crispy smashed <laughs> potatoes. And we keep a lot of the skins on. When I was a kid, I cried about it. I could not eat skins, but that's where all the flavor is. I love skins now. So we do like what, 50-50 skins? On these, this is all skin. All skins? I don't take any, I don't take any skins oh, off these ones. Yes. When we make our mashed potatoes, we only skin half the potato, yeah. mash them up, a little bit of skin in there. Oh man, so that's good. so good. Okay, it's been 10 minutes. Let's see what that gets us. I hope that's coming through because that's the way I want it. Mm -hmm. Let's try one of these little ones. Make sure we didn't screw these up too. Perfectly. Oh my gosh, even better. Yeah, that's beautiful. Honey. Get a seat. Let's do it. Sing you all my songs. And when you sing along, it brings on something that I thought was gone. Turns the switch back on.
definitely not long enough at this campsite. Nope. It's got me kind of like really excited to think about like other unique campsites. So do us a favor. If you've been to like a really cool campsite that you think we should know about, let us know because this is really awesome. I, I really only experienced this type of RVing while boondocking. So it's kind of cool to see it at a campground with full hookups. You don't even have to think about anything. No energy management, no, no water management. And you have like a boondocking style, but with comfort. I feel kind of fancy right here. In the fall, they have an amazing special where like if you book a week, you get two nights for free. So some campgrounds offer like off season discounts. So be looking for that because even if it might be a more expensive resort or a place like that in the off season, they might be offering some specials. So we're really excited to see what you guys recommend for us. We're excited to see some new places that we've never experienced like this before. Yeah, this place is awesome. Uh, I can't say it enough. Dinner was amazing. The last few dinners out here just, yeah. I think food just tastes better when you're in a cool, relaxing location. We are on our way to Nathan Riss's property, and anytime you can camp near a farm, I think you're oh, doing golden. yourself a favor. I mean, it's just, the farms are just, they just feel like life to me. It's fun. Really sad to say goodbye to the goats who's oh, out there man. just running on the fences. So let me show you really quick this site <laughs> and how to get into it. All these sites are kind of difficult to get into, but worth it when you do. So <laughs> that's a site. So we came in there. Did a did, 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 to try to get there, and the only way we're getting out is to go through this site. I mean, I guess we could back back into that one, but kind of a nightmare. But I would do it again in a heartbeat. Tons of room. Easy peasy as long as we have this site to pull into. <laughs> as long as you have an empty RV park, you're good. <laughs> Way to go, babe. Now, this tree right here dropped all kinds of like sappy specks all over the, the truck, so it's gonna need to be addressed. I don't, you can't see it, but. Oh, I can. You uh, can, can you feel, you feel that? It. It's like hard little pebbles. Wow. We're gonna take care of that. That's right. Yep. All right, two hour drive day. Not bad. Yep. But I think when we get there, we gotta cut some trees down. I'm not sure before we get in there. It's always an adventure. <laughs> All right, so better safe than sorry. We're gonna take this tree down so it doesn't land on my RV that's gonna be parked right here. We got a zip line over there. We got a water line here. We got power here. But luckily we're expert tree cutters. Arborist, if you will. Almost there, babe. It's right in the corner of that tree. It's like in a Y. Oh. I know. <laughs> Come on, Nathan. Wrap your arms around him and give him a little pull. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Nicely done, boys. I'm like, I'm backing up. I don't care what's going on. Yes. Okay. Good job, baby. That should have been pretty easy. <laughs> I forget that part about professional arborist.
So it was a little cloudy when we arrived here at the Ridge in Tennessee, just outside of Pigeon Forge. We've been enjoying some actual sunny weather the last few days, hanging out here at the Less Junk More Journey huddle. So we've had so much fun seeing old faces, new faces, making new friends. <laughs> this is a gorgeous park. Anytime we can have, you know, a spot to put this whole setup out here, I love it. This Favorite. like outside area is so much better with these uh, Solera sunshades. Right now we are heading to a serve event. Every time you can get one of these massive groups of people together and go do some good in the world, we're all for it. So it's we are amazing. heading to a children's home. It's Smoky Mountain Children's Home that's right here in Sevierville. I'm always going to pronounce, pronounce this wrong. <laughs> we're so excited to be supporting this organization that is celebrating their 103rd anniversary. We're going to hear so much about what they do. Um, they have 32 residents there and we're going to be going and working on this 70 acres of property that they own and that they run this home for the kids. We have 150 people working today. Many in the hands make light work and we're going to go and make a huge difference for these kids. Let's go uh, check this place out. I am still completely overwhelmed by yesterday and the amazing time that we all had serving at the Smoky Mountain Children's Home. Look at this guy. Yeah, I, I've been waiting to kind of do a review on these things. I'm looking <laughs> for steaks that are good that I didn't have to use my, uh, my trusty hammer to, to pound in. These are aluminum and they do not weigh anything. I love these things. They do hold our Solera shade down so much better than the other steaks that we used to have. Well, they make plastic ones too, but I'm worried about in the cold, whether or not those are gonna shatter as soon as they get cold. Sure. These are metal. Man, I can highly recommend it. They're, they're not cheap though. They're like 50 bucks or something, but they're light. It comes with like 10 or 12 of them. So we put the side up, we put this side up with it. It's awesome. And this is our favorite because it's it's a whole other room that feels like your own space. Yeah, I mean, at this point, we've already mentioned it twice in this video, so I feel <laughs> like we're selling it, but this space becomes a space. Yeah. As soon as you put this wall up and then this side wall and you come out and it's your own space, I, I really do like this. And especially a space where you could actually use it when there's not going to be any wind or, or whatever. And this actually helps a little bit with wind. So if the wind's yeah. coming here, it actually pushes your awning down. So. I'm not saying, don't leave it up in a hurricane. <laughs> Definitely not. So we're ready to head off for our next adventure, which is actually some really amazing family time. We are going to my cousin's wedding. We have not seen our family in Georgia for a couple of years, actually. It's gonna so, be a whirlwind. We're going to a wedding, and then we're going to a wedding. I know you've all been wondering, but it is finally over. <laughs> season eight, the never ending season is finally ending. We're wrapping it up right now. Um, thank you for all the people that were, were wondering. Messaging, messaging us. us. So yes, we're good. Um, season nine's coming up. We are so excited. We're gonna be RVing in a brand new way, something we've never done before. We took a break for just a couple of weeks to join our friends Less Young More Journey to host the Nightlight Rally sponsored by Grand Design. Our video of totality with over 300 of our friends will come out next week and will be the unofficial start of season nine. Thank you so much to everyone who joined us at the rally this past weekend. It was beyond our imagination. Imagination. We had so much fun and we can't wait to share the experience with you guys. So to wrap up season eight, 
right, we left Pigeon Forge and headed to my cousin's wedding in Georgia. You guys have seen Rome, Georgia many times in our videos. It's where my uncle's bus company, Eagle Christian Tours is. Christian and his new wife had a beautiful ceremony at Berry College campus, and it was just so nice for us to be able to share that with them. We then headed to our second wedding of the season. <laughs> my little brother Jackson married the love of his life in a beautiful 100-year-old hotel that's on the coast of Florida. It was a perfect night with many moments honoring our dad who we lost 10 years ago. After wrapping up the wedding season, we ended up heading to Maine and thankfully we had some amazing FOS crew members who kept our RV in Florida and drove us back and forth to the airport and we flew to Maine to pack up our It's Better Outside store. Everyone's been asking and they've been worried that they've missed it. You have not missed our spring store. It's actually launching next Sunday, April 21st. We cannot wait to share our daughter and designer Lily's East Meets West logo again, but on a couple different varieties of shirts and different colors and we have some- Purple. I know, he's pretty excited about the purple. <laughs> and we're really excited for you guys to be able to see so many new items that we've never had on the store before. If you don't wanna miss that announcement, make sure that you go to our website at findingoursomeday.com and sign up for our newsletter. We send it out weekly and you'll make sure that you never miss that. Our store is only open two times a year and it's only open for two weeks. So make sure you don't miss the store launching. We can't wait to see you guys out in the wild and wearing your It's Better Outside gear. So after our Eclipse special episode next week, um, season nine officially kicks off and it's down in the Florida Keys. Like I said, we have a lot of brand new stuff. We've got a lot going on, two brand new RVs. Kind of a big hint, but yeah. anyways, <laughs> we're excited. We'll see you guys next week.